Well, in 1981, I had my own agency in New York. Due to a whole series of unfortunate circumstances, within a three-month period, I ended up losing my business and found myself driving a cab in New York City. So in 1984, I had an agency again. So I started sitting there and playing with this little thing called Mac Paint, and I played around, did a little box, everything was cool until I saw fat bits, which allowed me to zoom into the pixel level. And that's when I realized that this was it. This was the future, this was my medium. Now, every time that I painted, I pretty much painted for the screen because I would use colors that were so vibrant that they wouldn't print. Damon was the first image that I did with the print in mind, because the 9600, I saw size, I saw 40 inches on, on the width and as long as the roll, so I thought panorama. When I got into Damon, now I was dealing with this massive panorama. So it was 40 inches by 10 feet, and the flattened file for that was 1.7 gigabytes. So fortunately, the machines had gotten powerful enough to, to hold it, and the printers were holding every bit of detail, so it was forcing me to get far more detail than I was getting before. Now, most of my files are compiled of many different files and subfiles, like uh, something like Lunch and Tiburon. The salt shaker itself is four different files. The accumulation can be somewhere in the two to 3,000 layers per file, until Damon, because of the size and the amount of elements in there, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15,000 layers that make up that 1.7 gigabyte file. And I always wanted to do Times Square. Through the years, I've done many studies of Times Square because it's the greatest example of neons and lights and stuff, especially at night. But I can never feel it. I can never quite get the feel of, of the painting until I saw the Epson 11880 printer. Whereas now all of a sudden I had 64 inches, I had all this room that I could work on. Now I had massive size, the only way to show Times Square is big. You get the same impact with the place itself. And with the 11880, I knew I could get the size, the color, and the detail that was important to capture the essence of Times Square. The finished piece now is made up of thousands of individual files, each containing hundreds of layers. And doing an overall guesstimate, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 750,000 layers between Illustrator and Photoshop. So there's a lot of key people in the painting, and Bill Atkinson, who's the guy who got me digital in the first place because he, he's the guy who wrote the Mac Paint. Just a little to the right of him is a guy named Jerry Harris, who's one of the two guys who wrote Pixel Paint, who also wrote, wrote the brush engine that's in the current Photoshop. And right almost the dead center of the painting is John and Tom Knoll, the two guys who wrote Photoshop. They are prominently displayed right in the front. There are many industry icons in the painting. There were close friends like Bruce Frazier, a good friend of mine who uh, unfortunately passed away during the production of this. So I have him walking off the painting on the left. There's quite a few photographers in there. There's uh, my good friend Jeff Shiri. He's riding his motorcycle and uh, his wife Becky is riding her motorcycle in there. And he's taking one of his traditional shots that are unplanned by just moving his hand around, taking pictures from wherever. So besides all of my friends and family, I'm in there too. I'm in there twice. I'm in the center of the painting where I'm taking a picture of my wife. My other position, I'm driving the cab on the far left side of the painting. I thought back of that hard year of mine, 1981, when I drove a cab. I looked at my hack license and using that as a reference, I painted myself as the driver in that cab. It's just a great reminder of where life can take you. I loved all the colors and detail I was getting from my Epson printers, but now there was this new concept of backlighting. And the display materials that we had then for inkjets, they weren't working. The blacks, which are so crucial for a night scene, were grays. The colors weren't as brilliant as I was hoping to get. Epson comes up with this display trans material. We did some early tests and all of a sudden here it was. Here was those dark tones that I needed. Here were the brilliant colors I was expecting. So finally the answer came out that I can now do what I had envisioned because the materials were catching up to my vision. The beauty of the Epson technology and the brilliance of this display trans material is that your message is seen by people and how it got there is transparent. What they're going to get is the full impact of what you were trying to say. So whatever your vision, it's there for the public and it's got all the brilliance that you originally wanted it had. But the Epson guys tell me about this opacifying layer that's built into the display trans, which is going to make the light flow nice and even. And it all sounded pretty good until I'm standing there in front of this 25 foot light box and I don't see the, the tubes behind the play. What I see is one big continuous brightly lit tone. So as I'm walking back and forth studying the details and seeing how things work, I'm amazed that the, the blacks are rich blacks, the colors are brilliant, but the neutral tones, the mid-tones, they are in fact neutral. 
something I couldn't get with other display materials before. There was one really key thing to this new material. I remember back in my early days when I dealt with backlit materials for signs and stuff like that, type was always kind of fuzzy. And the beauty of this material is that it holds up that detail. Those tiny bricks on that building way down the street up Broadway, about 15 blocks up, you can see those bricks. It holds up that detail perfectly, making everything crisp and sharp. Look at other people looking at the painting. I realize that they're captivated by the brilliance of the color. It's like they're looking at a monitor. They're not looking at a print, they're not looking at a piece of paper or, or something. They're actually looking at a monitor. So they're getting all that brilliance that they're used to getting from their plasmas, TVs, and so on. They're seeing that same brilliance and that clarity. With Epson technology and the Epson display trans material, it opens a whole new series of markets for creative professionals and service bureaus to create images that will capture people's attention, to be able to create an image that has all the brilliance and power that they originally intended that image to have.